<clears throat> All right, guys, we're leading into day two of Lake Winnebago. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's the weather just all of a sudden changed on us, and you guys are definitely going to see that. It got rough on us. It we didn't know cold. what to expect going yeah. out. Uh, I mean, it was interesting. The weather had dropped 30 degrees. I went from a t shirt and shorts the first day to stocking caps, six sweatshirts, five pairs of sweatpants to try to stay warm. North wind, you know, we don't have a ton of experience on this lake, and it's anybody's game. I mean, first to 90th was what, a pound and a half, two pounds? I mean, it was so tight in there in anyone's game, so we didn't know what to expect, but we were going to go battle. We were all still in it, and I think this yep. was the only tournament Drake didn't sleep in the morning beforehand because it was that cold. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably about I right. I could not even use my bob for my ball mount trolling motor because my hand was too cold. So we had to start trolling. Fishing on Winnebago in May. Have fun. <laughs> Addiction, the fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. An addiction is not desirable. It is something that overtakes your life. What happens when an addiction cannot be stopped? An addiction is stronger than any one drug with only one cure. The cure is not rehab. It is not medication. It is not a counselor. The only cure for us is the water beneath our feet. The rod in our hands, the anticipation of that next big bite, and the camaraderie we all share. This is Fish Addictions TV. Fish Addictions TV is brought to you by Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear. And the rest of our fine sponsors. What were you thinking day two waking up to basically snow? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I started putting on layers. I was extremely nervous. I had only caught like 13 fish the day before, and whenever there's a cold front like that, where it goes from shorts and t-shirt to that cold, I knew it was gonna be a struggle all day long. freaking out you know first big tournament of my life really <laughs> and we have a drastic weather change from day one to day two day two um i made some different decisions with my team i ended up going south it was really cold uh, i went to a place where i caught a lot of fish and pre-fish but not necessarily all bigger fish and I was worried about this, the water temperature change. I couldn't wear big gloves to keep my hands warm to you know, maneuver my bow mount. Um, so I had to go to trolling. And it actually paid off. I mean, I still caught fish doing that. You know, I caught five fish, but I just, I just didn't get the bigger fish that I needed. I got okay fish and you know, that's just not gonna cut it. I don't remember what the fluctuation in temperature was, but it was 20 or 30 degrees. And you know when that happens, that bite is gonna be tough. Uh, I, I stuck with my game plan. I went out, I fished the same area and lost one good one. I think I panicked a little bit and, and really learned from that experience in the end. And I found out I wasn't the only one 
out there struggling to get five fish and, and a lot of guys that maybe even came in with five fish got them with minutes to spare stick with your game plan you know stick with maybe a little longer i ran around and and should have stuck to right where i was because the guys that were right where i was fishing ended up with five fish there's either not a limit or they're small they're small 4.54 pounds is going to be our weight today for the three fish. Robert, you ever brought in less than five? Yes, I have. We all we all have. That's all part of the deal. But today you did find five. Looks like 10.36 pounds. Two-day total for you is 22.87. 33rd place, 22.94. 39th as it sits right now. Super excited for Drake. You know he went up, he went back up north on day two. How you doing, Drake? Good to have you here. Looks like we got five in there, right? Yeah, we did. We had a pretty good day yesterday. Let's see if we can equal that. Ronald, get over here and let's find out what our weight's gonna be. I wasn't catching a ton of fish up there, but I knew if I'd get some fish, um, they'd be the right ones. 11.88, nice job today. 25.61, 18th place as it sits right now. Come down to it, I only caught six fish all the second day. Well inside a check caching range. Let's hope. It was a grind all day. But it happened to be the right six fish to allow me to do some damage and get a check. Face off and let's crown our first champion of the 2018 season. Dusty, how you feeling, man? Oh, a little nervous. I think it's going to be really close. All right, well, let's get it up there and find out who our champion is here in Winnebago, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It settles in. Today's weight for Dusty Minky, 11.25 pounds, gets Corey Springle, champion of the 2018 National Ally Tour here in Winnebago. One of the cool things about this tournament is you have guys that you look up to that fished this, and Corey Springle is definitely one of them. On a, on a bite, I don't think pretty much anybody else was on, and it's pretty cool to go back, read the stories, because I know what I was doing, but what was he doing to win that tournament? That was one of the things I really took away from that, is really paying attention to what these winning guys are doing. As you can see, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Winnebago chain is a wrap. Next stop, Bay City, Michigan, and Saginaw Bay. Eskimo pistol bit is the ultimate weapon to pair with your one half inch high torque cordless drill. If you want to be mobile and destroy the ice in a hurry, at just under four pounds, nothing will slow you down as this unit was engineered to cut fast, cut smooth, and maximize the battery life of your cordless drill. Best of all, it's lightweight, so it won't wear you out. If you've been considering a cordless drill auger bit, we challenge you to try the pistol and find something you don't like about it. At Glacier, our goal is to build only the highest quality ice fishing shelters, constructed of premium materials that will provide lasting value and years of trouble-free service. See for yourself how our attention to detail and never-ending commitment to product improvement sets a Glacier Ice House apart from the competition and makes a Glacier Ice House the ultimate way to play. For more information, visit GlacierIceHouse.com. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats. Well, guys, just back the boat in. Uh, our next event is at Saginaw, and uh, this sounds like it's going to be a lot of fish. <laughs> Get the kids to bed? Yes, sir. <laughs> so long, finally. Just restringing oh. some some uh, rods up. Bringing some rods. Yeah. 
I'm gonna get, uh, I'll get Drake on the other line here. So when I was leaving um, Winnebago, you already start thinking about the next location, um, which was Saginaw Bay. Um, none of us had ever been there. Mike had done a little ice fishing there. Um, but other than that, none of us had been there. So you're excited, you're nervous, you, you don't know what's gonna happen. So you start studying right away. You start trying to make as many contacts as you can to figure out what's going on before you even get out there. Well, I'm, my plan, I just, cause I got 17 hours. So I'm gonna take off Wednesday evening and go pick, pick Brad up, probably get a little ways past Duluth, hour, two, three hours past Duluth and get, okay. a, ho get a hotel room just I just don't want to drive 17 hours in one shot. Woo! We're in the truck. Oh, it's the Wednesday before Saginaw event. A lot of mixed emotions. We're just pulling out of the driveway now. You, you know, you do these personal interviews by yourself and you just don't know really what to say. I mean, I'm excited, I'm nervous, redemption focused, missing the family already. We leave the National Walleye Tour Winnebago. I just remember hitting, I just remember it hitting me saying, we've got three more of these. launched the boat first day of pre-fish long drive to get here a lot of anticipation to put those first couple fish in the boat huh, I'm ready we just put our boats in um, we're gonna head up north and um, we're gonna do some trolling with uh, small crankbaits it sounds like but I want to try some big crankbaits some big flicker shads um, we're gonna pull some spoons spinners one thing I want to try doing is uh, jigging these rock piles also so I think that could be a good tactic out here. Probably doesn't get seen a lot or used a lot. So try to find these 25 inch fish. It sounds like we need five pounders. Welcome to the farm. When and where and how do I start preparing for a body of water? I've never even set foot on open water. Pre-fishing Saginaw Bay, we had kind of two options, basically. We were gonna go all the way around the thumb. I think we had it clocked out 78 miles. Oh, ho, ho! What I? <laughs> My first Lake Huron walleye. I'm celebrating. That's what we're here for. Just about three pounds bigger than that though. <laughs> oh, that was a bigger walleye. <laughs> it's gone! Part of spinner fishing, you lose them! Big drum out here, looking for the big walleye, but I keep finding these big drum. I caught a fish taco. Yeah, buddy, doubled up on wallies. Ah, the mythical walleye. That's a nice fish. Nice. A little better. So, you know, even in the inner bay, we caught some nice fish. And then when I traveled to the outer bay, you know, you know, 70, 80 miles away. We got on some really nice fish. Holy cow! Look at the size of this thing, man! Jesus!
before the spot, before the hole, before the bait. It starts with a passion, and that passion starts at runnings. The best gear and supplies from the most trusted brands. When you get the strike, will you be ready? Runnings, your home, farm, and outdoor store. I mean, I'm talking four to six pounders, even a 29 and a half incher I caught. So, you know, that's super exciting. That's a big up, especially in pre-fish because you're, you're figuring something out. And it's paying off so far. But the problem is the key is going to be, you know, it's like, it's like 60 some miles up here. And this, this body of water with the wind, it's nasty. Um, the, the waves are so close to each other. You don't get like a reprieve like you do on Lake Erie. So if we can keep catching these and we can make it up here, it could be good. Sometimes it's just absolute controlled chaos in the boat. I mean, we're out here, we got three of the four rods, three of the five rods in, fish on them, laying on the floor trying to get them back out. So. Where now we, it's time to prioritize. Baits in the water, baits in the water, get the fish back in the water. So going into Saginaw Bay, Great Lakes, um, you think that there is a ton of water, and there is. So there's a ton of water to cover with three guys. Um, it definitely helps out. Um, we did catch a few more there on that spot. Uh, not the ones that we're quite looking for, but it might be a spot that we could run to uh, fill a limit if we need be. I knew just from previous experience that I really had to watch that water temperature and the winds. And that and that's kind of what I looked at going into my pre-fish. One. Another big one. Four pounds. Oops. Got another nice fish, man. It's worth it coming all the way up here. I just hope we can make it up here. <laughs> we got big waves today. Again. <laughs> 21 inch. Here. God, it's gonna be good. Another nice beauty, guys ridiculous I'm glad we made the trip up here so we're believe me we're gonna be watching the weather and if it's right I will be up here going after these and hopefully they're still here that is a gorgeous fish as we're reeling in the lines of wrapping up our pre-fish for Saginaw we learned something today that you know this big body of water is kind of like Green Bay or Lake Erie when you get a big blow or you have a constant wind from one direction and it switches, the cold water out from that main lake comes in. And that's what we found here. Our water temp has dropped 13, 14 degrees from when we were up here two days ago. And I'm, I'm, we are on pretty decent fish inside the inner bay where I think we can get high teens, low 20s for weight. And uh, I, I'm really thinking maybe that's gonna put a damper on on the fishing for the guys, but I guess we'll see. We've got our fish, you gotta stick to your plan, just grind it out. Uh, we're hoping for low 20s, and uh, that's where we're at with this. You know, thinking about Saginaw Bay, a couple things stick out in my mind. The first thing is Scott. You know, Scott opened, welcomed us with open arms, and and literally opened his house to us, which we can't thank him enough for that. And, and Justin and the guys, Isaiah, I mean, those guys literally took their time every single night to check in with us, see how things were going, and, and definitely want to thank them for that. We 
says we don't eat good on tour. <laughs> One of the things I have to mention about Scott is the fact that this guy can cook and cook and he made us eat and eat and eat and eat. So that's your tooth you just lost? Yeah, look. Oh my goodness. So you lost a tooth since I've been gone? Are you going to lose another one? Uh-huh. No, this is to you guys. I, I hope the best for you this week. Um, you guys are always welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. This is uh, Scott's famous, world goodness. famous. I don't know, it's meat. Stir fry. Stir fry. Chicken. Chicken fried rice. Ribeye. Shrimp. We don't ask questions around here, we just eat. Runnings, your home farm and outdoor store with over 40 locations. fishing. Make your own luck. Day one, Saginaw Bay. Uh, Pre-fish has been up and down all over the place, and so we're just out there. Hopefully those big ones go. I mean, we've been catching some nice ones here and there, and and uh, had some consistency, and then the wind switches, and then you got to figure it out all over again. So that's where we're at. We're gonna go out there and pound it hard. It's about all we can do right now. I'm excited. I think we'll catch a bunch of fish. Uh, we'll probably have to sort through a bunch of fish. The wind, it's, it's pretty strong out there right now. It's coming out of the west, and it's gonna, do a complete 180. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there, but I think it's gonna lay down. Should be a good day. All right guys, day one, the boats are backing in. We're getting ready. We got about a half an hour before takeoff. It is early, but I tell you what, guys are still jacked up. I know I'm jacked up. Um, we're at the second stop, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully we got a good game plan. <laughs> You know, the different things that we used throughout the week, you know, as we were pulling boards, we were throwing shiver minnows, we were throwing rattle baits. I mean, it's another unique thing about this. You, you have to try it all. You can't be afraid to step outside the box. And, and uh, on tournament day, I ended up pulling spinners with, uh, with boards and, and really had a lot of bites. I really, you know, the inner bay, we had good fish going. In the outer bay, I felt like I had really good fish going. Going through day one of the tournament, you know, I kept thinking about obviously running way up north, but you know, I wasn't getting the fish that I needed. I was getting small fish. All right, a piece of one to start out with. Good job. <laughs> good stuff. And if you're on those kind of fish that we were on, I, I just, I should have did it. I made a last minute choice where I just, I didn't do it. You know, the right fish were out there and I just, I didn't go and get them. And it's, the board is buried right now. It's still going. We're hoping, there it is, I see the board. Yep. Yep, sheep farm animal. Yep. Dang it. Yep. Fish sheep. Not what we're looking for. Oh, 
we thought we had it. And, you know, I kick myself right now, you know, and even after the tournament, you know, it was a big downer for me that I didn't make that run to the Outer Bay and go the 80 miles and do it. You know, I might not have got, you know, five, you know, even if I would have got three nice fish, I would have kept myself in that tournament for day two. And I, I just felt like I took myself out on day one. Looks like our weight today, seven, five, six. So seven, five, six is our weight, shakes his head. Yeah, I got scared this morning. It, it, my, my whole deal was a water temperature deal. So, you know, it's just a game changer at the last minute. And we were gonna make that 30 mile run. Mike had some really good fish that he had caught. We had taken a pass through there and caught some nice fish. So I was confident in that first day with the wind coming that I could get enough fish, enough weight. And, you know, I struggled. It, it, it just is what it is. Those fish, you know, slid in or out, and I just couldn't get those bites. Looks like we're settling for 1167, Drake. 1167, man. It, it's so humbling to fish something like the National Walleye Tour because there's 100 to 150 boats. We had some just great quality fish that were 80 miles away by boat, and you have to make that decision as an angler. You know, none of these guys are here paying these entry fees and, and playing with everybody else without having knowledge. 8.73 pounds for your fish today, so hopefully hopefully uh, some, some better ones tomorrow, man, but good job. Thank you. And for Brett King, it paid off, and I, I couldn't be happier. Brett is one of the first guys that ever basically opened his arms and welcomed me into the Warrior family, and uh, I've never looked back. Glad to have you here in Bay City, Michigan. Congratulations, everybody. I'm Chip Lear on behalf of the entire National Walleye Tour staff. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow here in Winona Park. Have a great day.